This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to use the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. While much of the Western world has been taken aback by and condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the same can't be said for Russia itself. In fact, several opinion polls have claimed that in the region of 70% of Russians support the so-called special military operation. And while there is an argument to be made about the validity of polls conducted by state-controlled pollsters, and the fact that information about the invasion might not actually be getting through to ordinary Russians, or it seems Putin, this immense support raises a number of questions. Why are Russians seemingly rallying around Putin? And just how has he managed to pull in so much power and influence? So much so that it may be bordering on a cult. Putin's cult of influence can broadly be said to have three interlocking and interconnected strands. The political, the cultural, and the social. And when it comes to all three strands, this isn't something that's just appeared overnight. On the cultural and social side of things, Putin has, until recently, revitalized Russia's title as a world power, and played to his domestic audience in this regard. As The Economist highlights, Russia's invasion of Ukraine is a crusade against a liberal European future that's being fought in the name of the Russian world, a previously obscure historical term for a Slavic civilization based on shared ethnicity, religion, and heritage. But Putin's fascination with history and the Russian world is blindingly obvious when you take a look at his 5,000-word treatise published over the summer, entitled The Historical Unity of Russians and Ukrainians. In the treatise, Putin remarks how Russians and Ukrainians were one people, a single whole, with Russians, Ukrainians, and Belarusians all descendants of the ancient Rus. And this is core to Putin's social argument when justifying the special military operation, an issue which he describes as a matter of defending or rightfully reuniting Russia and the Russian world. And using this justification, Putin has managed to rally round some considerable support. Take, for instance, Putin's first public appearance since the invasion, a rally at the Luzhniki Stadium, with over 95,000 flag-waving people in attendance. Both the venue and the words Putin said echo the idea of Putin's cult of influence. Putin stood on top of a large octagonal structure, which served as an altar, and read from St. John's Gospel by praising the sacrifice of the Russian army saying, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lays down his life for his friends. In effect, this is Putin turning the war and his presidency into a matter of history, by correcting the course of history. But it's not all just about stages and biblical readings. Putin's stranglehold on society, both culturally and socially, is in part driven by Russian censorship and surveillance. According to the Varieties of Democracy project, since Putin took over the office of president, Russia has suffered a precipitous decline in freedom of expression and alternative sources of information. In the 1990s, the index gave Russia a score of 0.8, but by 2022, that had crashed down to 0.28. And things aren't getting better in this regard either. A new law passed by the lower chamber of Russia's parliament towards the beginning of the war made knowingly disseminating false information and data about the use of Russia's armed forces a criminal offence, and one that's punishable by up to a 15-year prison sentence, or a 1.5 million ruble fine, equivalent to nearly two years' salary at the average Russian rate. So it's easy to understand why people might not speak up, and might fall into a supposed cult of Putin. And those who aren't just scared into silence or support genuinely do believe Russian state propaganda. A number of reports have highlighted quite how many Russians have flat out dismissed the accounts of their friends and family living in Ukraine who are experiencing this conflict firsthand, with them arguing that the attacks are just part of a false flag operation organized by the Ukrainian government in order to have something to blame Putin for. 
even going as far as arguing that images have been manipulated. And this is remarkable. Being able to turn someone against their own family and friends on a mass scale is not simple and really demonstrates how the cult of Putin has become so insidious. So how has he achieved this near total control? Well, the Eurasia Barometer survey shows a considerable and statistically significant positive relationship between watching TV news, i.e. state-controlled news, and trust in both the president, Vladimir Putin, as well as Russia's influence and place in the world. So maybe it's not surprising that when nearly two-thirds of Russians continue to use TV news as their primary source of information, the development of a virtuous cycle is created. Those who watch TV news, which is controlled by the government, support Putin more, meaning that they'll self-select pro-Putin news sources and watch more TV news, which supports Putin, and so on and so forth. But Putin's cult isn't something limited to Russia's border either, though. There are a significant number of highly influential political figures that seem to admire Putin and even stand by him. And these are figures from all around the world. In the US, you'll find people like Donald Trump and Tucker Carlson. In Europe, you've got Nigel Farage and Matteo Salvini. And in Asia and the Middle East, you're looking at people like Rodrigo Duterte and Benjamin Netanyahu. So clearly, this reaches beyond Russia and Putin's direct area of influence. And this is important because Putin's, now former European allies, have in the past been some of his greatest fans. At one point, only a few years ago, Matteo Salvini wore a shirt featuring Putin in Moscow, leading to this interesting moment on the Polish-Ukrainian border. Jednocześnie mam pewną uwagę personalną do do pana senatora Salviniego. Mam tutaj pewien prezent, z którym chciałbym, żebyśmy wspólnie, panie senatorze. Pojechali, pojechali na granicę i do ośrodka dla uchodźców, żeby zobaczyć, co, co twój przyjaciel Putin zrobił. Co osoba, którą określa pan jako swojego przyjaciela, zrobiła i co tak naprawdę zrobiła tym ludziom, którzy tutaj w ilości 50 tysięcy dziennie przekracza granicę. Prosiłbym, żebyśmy wspólnie pojechali, wspólnie pojechali. Właśnie pojedziemy zaraz do ośrodka dla uchodźców i pojedziemy na granicę, jeżeli będzie pan w tej koszulce. Zapraszam, panie, panie senatorze. No respect for you. Thank you. Regardless, though, it's clear that Putin has a lot of control over culture, society, politics, and the entirety of Russian life. And over recent years, that seeped more and more across the world. In one way, though, Russia's invasion of Ukraine can, with hindsight, be seen as a cack-handed attempt by Putin to solidify his cult. To solidify his place in history as a great Russian leader. As the leader who would assert Russia's true place in the world that would stand up for the Russian world. And this isn't a new thing either. Throughout his term, it can be seen that history has been a constant present for Putin. In fact, according to the New Statesman, whenever Putin meets with historians, he asks, how will history judge me? The issue being that, as we've all seen, all of the assumptions, all of the support that Putin has rested his invasion on are little more than just that. Assumptions and deadly ones. So that's the cult of Putin. For most of us in the West, it's pretty dispiriting to see how Putin has successfully convinced most of the Russian public in supporting his war. And it's clear that the gap between Western and Russian perceptions is astounding. Just consider the fact that in the US, 98% of Americans blame Russia for the war. In Russia, on the other hand, polling from the Levada Center found that just 3% of Russians blame Russia for the war, and a staggering 81% of Russians support the war in Ukraine. And for Putin's part, his approval rating has skyrocketed. Now, obviously, these figures should be taken with a pinch of salt. Russian polling agencies aren't the most trustworthy. But A, the Levada Center is the best among them, and B, even this complicated list polling designed to protect against preference falsification has found that a strong majority of Russians support the war. 
There was initially some hope that as the body bags piled up and most of the rest of the world continued to condemn Russia, as happened on Thursday when Russia was expelled from the UN Human Rights Council, that the Russian public would come around. But at this point, that looks unlikely. Near unanimous support for the war amongst the Russian public makes dissent difficult. And if anything, the fact that the war is actually going badly might increase support within Russia because it's psychologically difficult to accept that your economy has been crippled and thousands of your countrymen have been killed for an unjust war. This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant is an online STEM learning platform that turns complex subjects into fun and interactive experiences. I actually did a computer science degree, and I've loved exploring Brilliant to refresh my skills, as well as learning new ones to help with my current job, like their superb statistics courses. But you don't need any kind of background in STEM. If you just want to spend a bit of time building your skills, then you can do it right away with no long, boring lectures like the ones I had to sit through. Sorry to my former university. Instead, you can learn through interactive games and puzzles, the kind of thing you actually want to do. There's something at all levels too, with more advanced courses on things like neural networks and even quantum computing. Just pick a course that you're interested in and get started. They're all designed by award-winning instructors and built upon the principle of active learning. So you're gaining STEM knowledge by actually doing it. Brilliant helps you learn new things and sharpen your skills. So if you want to improve with STEM, then you should sign up to Brilliant at brilliant.org forward slash TLDR EU. And the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks so much for supporting the channel.